Wanted to talk a little bit about what we're talking about here at Solid because it's a little difficult to characterize. We've cast the framing a little bit wider than just IoT, which is kind of a buzzword, or just hardware, which has been around for a long time. So talking about kind of what's, what's new here. The answer is that uh, hardware and the physical environment is following the path that computing has set over the last uh, half century or so. In the 1940s, computing was very, very difficult. It was hardwired, it was very specific, and you had to be a mathematician and understand computing at a fundamental level in order to make use of it. By the 70s, computing had become uh, high level. It's possible to, to program computers in abstract ways, and computers are becoming a little more general as well. You can use the same computer for your payroll that you would for inventory management or something like that. So computers are starting to take on abstract characteristics, but they're still forbiddingly expensive, and you need to be part of an institution to make use of computing. By the uh, uh, current day, by the late 90s, really, computing had become inexpensive enough and easy enough to be applied to practically any kind of problem. Um, you, can, you can run computing on your phone that's powerful enough to do a lot of what you would want it to do. And programming is so easy, thanks to high-level programming languages, that just about anyone can learn how to use uh, computers, how to have them do what you need them to do. This is a snippet of really awful code that I wrote earlier this year to analyze the 500 or so applications that we got for uh, talks at Solid. I had a problem. I was able to sit down for an afternoon and write some code and come up with a solution and use computers to solve it. It was extraordinarily easy. And computers are powerful enough that you don't have to write good code for a lot of things. You just have to kind of know how to do it. You still have to write exquisite code to do things like run a big search engine, but you don't in order to write a CGI script to, uh, to search for tags that your committee has used in reviewing talk applications. So this is, this is what's starting to happen in, in software, in, sorry, in hardware. We're starting to see hardware become as easy to apply to a lot of problems as software is. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for this. In, in design and prototyping, we have excellent software that makes it possible to go from idea to reality very quickly and into prototyping tools. We have these beautiful cubes that, uh, that can create uh, CNC machined parts and 3D printed components to test out your ideas very quickly. The components have become much easier and much cheaper to use. MEMS devices, like what you see on your left, have become an order of magnitude cheaper over the last 10 years. Even LCD screens, like the ones that you would use in a mobile phone, have become 35% cheaper in the last year alone. And more importantly, they've become modular. So you don't have to understand wireless uh, protocols in order to connect your device to the internet. You all received a, a, a particle proton with your registration when you walked in. That's an easy to use device that you can connect to any piece of hardware to hook it up to the internet. That means that you don't have to be an expert in this stuff in order to use it. Just like you don't have to be an expert in um, uh, browser protocols, you can just use uh, you know, an, an easy to use JavaScript uh, uh, library like uh, jQuery to create really beautiful effects. You don't have to be an expert anymore to start to use this kind of stuff to solve problems. Processors, everything has become uh, powerful enough and efficient enough that you can start to use these high-level programming languages everywhere. One of the most popular workshops that we had on Tuesday was on Node.js for embedded systems. We have a book coming out on the same topic a little bit later this year. It's already out. You can, you can buy uh, the, the early release version of it. Um, it's, it's unthinkable two or three, certainly five years ago, to imagine using JavaScript to program an embedded system. Usually, this stuff requires low-level, hardcore programming uh, that only experts were able to understand, but now anyone can use it. There's a lot of expertise and funding floating around. These incubators uh, make it possible to have an idea and, and not only get funding, but also get guidance on how to set up a supply chain, which still remains pretty difficult, but it certainly helps to have people backing you up. And on manufacturing, uh, we have not only you know, Shenzhen, which you see here. This is the Seed Studio factory in a photo that David Craner took for the pop-up factory that's in the other building. You also have a lot of digital uh, fabrication, digital manufacturing that makes it easier to start to produce stuff domestically or, or on the bench top. There's a machine in the other hall from Tempo Automation that's a desktop pick-and-place machine, which is crazy to think that someone could have something like that. 
Um, so this has all become much easier. Uh, there's a company called Plethora that sent in some, some last minute machined parts for the car that you've seen assembled in the very back of the exhibit hall as well. That's because they were able to take these, uh, these, these designs and turn them into reality very, very quickly. And finally, you can distribute this stuff through channels like Etsy and Amazon that let you connect uh, with, with any kind of niche audience and sell to it. You don't have to put your stuff on the shelves at Walmart to make it work. The result of all of this is something like the pop-up factory that you see in the other hall. The guys who pulled it off, who spoke yesterday morning, uh, managed to do it in, in just about two months from beginning to end, which is extraordinary. So I was struck by this, uh, by this quote in Turing's Cathedral, which is George Dyson's terrific history of the early computing uh, efforts. He quotes Richard Feynman saying, the trouble with computers is you play with them. And I think that's a really, that's a really poignant thought, uh, that, that even when they were extraordinarily difficult, people were able to, to sort of play with them and start to experiment with them. Computers provide a very fast feedback loop. You write a line of code, you put it in, it runs it, you see the outcome, and you, and you react to it immediately. Hardware hasn't been like that before, but it's starting to become like that now. This is one of many of these uh, Shanzai phones that you've probably seen in people's presentations over the last couple of days. Uh, Joey showed some yesterday, David showed some yesterday. These are phones that you can buy in, in the markets in Shenzhen. They're, they're small run, they're really strange. This one is in the shape of a skull. It says Skeletor uh, between the teeth on the front. And when you hold down the, the home button, it explodes in this like terrifying scream uh, and it starts blinking and a skull pops up on the, on the screen. It's, it's so extravagantly unnecessary um, and you can't imagine anyone actually buying this except for kind of Western tourists who go to China and, and think this is hilarious. But you find a lot of these things, and it's not, it's not that cheap to create a new injection mold and start to do this kind of stuff, but people do it. So this is the, this is the GeoCities phone. This is the beginning of the movement. You're starting to see the result of new tools being opened up to a new community. This is exactly the same thing as the pages you used to see in the 90s that had the blinking uh, construction GIFs on them. This is people playing, and the result is going to be very, very big once people get their hands on this stuff more widely. So this is where all of this starts to meet really big business. The Internet of Things has become the management imperative of the last uh, couple of years. It's the idea that follows the big data movement, this idea that you instrument, optimize uh, your entire organization. It used to be that big data was only available to companies that did stuff in the virtual realm that already connected their business to computers. And now big data is available to, to anyone. You can connect a tractor to the cloud and, and use sort of big data ideas. This requires the kind of hardware that we've been talking about. Uh, and it, it's going to come, I think, from companies that know how to play with this kind of stuff. You probably saw, by the way, the report that Michael Chewy from McKinsey put out yesterday that put the prospective value of the IoT at up to $11 trillion a year uh, by 2025. This is really big stuff. And there's often confusion about how it stacks up against the hardware movement that we're talking about. And this is why we talk about both at the Solid Conference. Um, we kind of divide up the new hardware movement and the IoT. And new hardware is enabled by this kind of uh, new supply chains, processes, design, prototyping tools. IoT is all about being connected to the internet and having software behind it, software intelligence that reaches out into the physical world. And the sweet spot is going to be right in the middle, where you can do a lot of cool stuff, whether you're playing with a, with a GeoCities phone or trying to build up a really new, uh, big way to make, say, farming or cities more efficient. All of this makes uh, technology and software relevant to any kind of company now. You don't have to be an Amazon uh, or an online advertising agency to take advantage of the internet and of, of software intelligence. You can be any kind of company. So now every company is a tech company. And that is the opportunity to, uh, to work on stuff that matters, as Tim always says you should do. You're no longer limited to, uh, to building social networks and payment platforms. Now you can go out and make the world a more efficient place, a safer place, and a more accessible place. And that is what we are delighted to talk about at Solid. 
and um, hope you enjoy the rest of the program today and think about the new movement that you're standing in. Thanks.